A New Testament reading comes from Apostle Paul's letters to the Church of Ephesus, Ephesians chapter 4, beginning from 14 up to 16. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheme. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. The word of the Lord. Here we see after spending three long chapters writing about our life in Christ, our life together in Christ, Paul now turns his attention to God's desire that we would be rooted in truth, that we would find union in the knowledge of Christ Jesus our Lord, and we would not be tossed to or fro by every wimp of doctrine. Instead, Paul urges us to be rooted in the truth. But then Paul goes on to say, to speak this truth in love. For the whole body, the body of Jesus Christ, is built up in love and by love. To live in Christ is to speak the truth in love. But that's a very hard thing to do. For one, it is hard because we set these two things up against each other. Truth on the one corner, love in the other corner. And because we care so much about our personal relationship, we are often afraid to speak the truth to someone. We swallow the truth. But any relationship that cannot handle the truth is bound often by conditional love, which isn't actually love at all, according to the Gospel. Another reason, perhaps we have a hard time speaking the truth in love, is that we live with conflicting truth. Every parent knows that. You look at your child's report card and you say, oh, I love you unconditionally. And you know, grades are not really an important thing. And then you say, but C plus? <laughs> That's because you believe in the two things. One, the importance of getting good grades. And the other, the equally or more importance of accepting your child unconditionally. Still other times, it is difficult to speak the truth in love because we sometimes really don't know the truth. And I can share my personal stories. When I went to shopping with my daughter in her high school days, it was honor even for me to ask accompany her. Sometimes that's, you know, simply, right, laid out. And mom is the first choice. And I don't know why she chose me. And, you know, during the shopping, it requires a lot of prayer and patience. Maintaining your face and good spirit because it treads quite long, like not one or two hours, sometimes three, four, even five hours. And so she showed me a couple of dresses she picked up and she would make those short trip. You remember that, right? The fitting room. And when she showed me the couple of dresses and she asked about my opinion about them. That's when I get silent. And she often thinks that 
the reason I am silent is because I really don't like them. Or I am in anguish trying to figure it out how to say these things more nicely. Because sometimes she would choose a dress that is so provocative, at least from my perspective. You know, so little material to cover. <laughs> um, but the reality is that I don't really know about this teenager's fashion trend. I don't really know if it is nice or trendy dress or not. And I don't know much about the truth about as far as uh, teenagers fashion style is concerned. But when we turn to the Christian community, there are more serious problems with speaking the truth in love. We know how much sometimes damage Christians have done to each other and to those outside of the church in pushing their truths on each other. Though actually we were just paddling well rehearsed perspective on the truth. And we know that sometimes when the church has been so clear about its truth, it was sometimes wrong. And we at times feel as Paul says that every whip of doctrine is blowing to and fro past us, often yesterday's truth is something that today we strongly doubt. And sometimes we even repeat yesterday's truth over and over again as if that is, they, they fit into our today's modern context. And then we ask, whose truth? His truth, her truth, their truth, or our truth. And every time there is a conflict, the precise reason that we have conflict is that both people think that they have the truth. And all that we can agree on is that there is just a whole lot of her lying around when we push my version, our version of truth against other. So sometimes like a Pontius Pilate who wants to throw up hands up in the air and say truth? What is truth? Although he could not see it at the time because Pilate was looking at the whole embodiment of truth in love. Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. And Jesus is the incarnation of God's love. In Jesus, we finally see truth in love and compassion. Have you ever noticed that how good Jesus was at speaking the truth with both compassion and conviction at the same time? Compassion is that is, it, it is to have the ability to be with those that you love. You love so much that no matter how great the suffering is, that's the compassion. Conviction, on the other hand, it is to express a truth that rises from the deepest part of your soul, the foundation of your soul. Compassion and conviction are not antithetical. But both of them are very dangerous without holding hands with together. So we cannot say the truth with the full conviction without compassion, or we can do the other way around either. It is not very hard to just do one of these two things separately. For example, a community of faith uh, can say that we are really sick and tired of people making judgment of what is right doctrinally and what is right and what is not. We are just committed to loving. It doesn't matter what you are into, no judgment here. 
we are just going to love you. Sounds pretty good. But that community has a very hard time being prophetic or disciplined or taking a stand for anything that is significant. Alternatively, another kind of faith community can say, we are very clear about what we believe with our full conviction. So if you are going to be part of our church or our community, we expect that you confront them, conform to them everything that we believe. But that always leads to a graceless judgment. Who is right and what is right and what is not. And it leads to a lot of anxiety about the mystical them in quotation that we blame for our problem. And we see this in our society, we see this even in political context, that doing one thing or the other separately. No, it's not hard to be all about compassion or all about conviction, but holding these two together is quite challenging and it's very hard. But in fact, we cannot do it. I think only Christ can speak the truth in love. And we only find our ability for approximation of this to the degree that we live in Christ, which has been Paul's theme throughout all his epistles. In Christ, by Christ, or through Christ. We walk and live together with Christ's love. As we live in Christ, and as every each one of us is a precious part of the whole body of Jesus Christ, we too find that Christ is showing us the way in spite of our flaws and our failed attempt. This means that the goal for a faith community is not to constantly measuring quotients. Measuring is quotients of confession or a conviction. Rather, the goal should be to draw ourselves to closer to Christ. As we do that, God's Spirit allow us in Christ and by Christ's help to speak the truth in love to a world that is a dying for both. But our world like to hear the truth but would like to do so in compassion and love. So I, I think that this will be a call to every one of us. How can we say the truth? But in love. In the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.